Hey guys, how you doing? Thanks for dropping by, I appreciate it. It's Glockster42. This is going to be kind of a much delayed follow-up video to my um, reloading basics for 308 um, with Virgin Brass. So in this video what I'm going to do is uh, showing you a couple of different techniques for getting your bra brass prepared, your once fired brass prepared uh, for reloading. I I'm going to keep it pretty simple. I find that uh, Life's more difficult enough without you uh, making your hobbies and things more difficult. So uh, let's get going here. Um, and uh, what we've got here is uh, we've got two once fired cases. These have both been fired out of my M305. These two are actually uh, Israeli TZ80 military cases, and these two are uh, federal um, commercial cases. Both fired out of my M305. Now, once you've uh, actually uh, gone ahead and collected your brass, uh, whether it's your own brass, whether it's range brass that you found, whether it's once fired brass that you've purchased, the first thing you have to do is inspect your brass. Because uh, I'll show you a few examples of um, brass that should be still good, but after a second and third loading has had some issues. So let's take a look at uh, why you really need to inspect your brass. Now then, right here are three examples of why you absolutely have to inspect your brass cases before you reload them. This one here, it is a uh, Winchester head stamp. It was its third reloading, and out of the M305, the M305 is a very violent action. You can see we've got um, um, crack right dead center in the middle of the case, almost all the way around. So that was pretty easy to spot. That's one you have to spot. Now most commonly, you're going to get a crack right along the bottom of the webbing. This is on case number four. This one was actually um, labeled for disposal after I had uh, after I had used it. So we knew that that th this one was going. Same with this one. This is another. Uh, this is a very very old Imperial case. It's four reloadings out of the M305, which is about maximum. As you can see, that case is just about separated all the way through. Now if you mess up and you miss it, this is what's going to happen. No rim, no case head, total case, to, total case separation. I was lucky. Uh, this fell this fell right out of the uh, right out of the chamber, so I had no issues there. But you don't want that. That could be catastrophic if it um, if it let go during firing. Near as I can tell, this must have let go upon extraction, pulled it apart while I extracted it. So this is why you have to make sure you inspect your cases. So now that after you've inspected all your cases <clears throat> and sorted them out, I like to tumble my brass. So we'll throw it, um, I usually use a Lyman Turbo Twin Tumbler, um, throw that in for a couple hours, get them all nice and clean. Um, these aren't as super clean, these aren't as clean as I normally would have them, but that's the next step is to get them tumbled. We'll assume that we've got these tumbled to your liking. Now, like I said, two of these cases are military prime, military cases. So that means, you can see that the primers are crimped in. So in order to um, reprime them, there's a couple things we're going to have to do. Now you can use a conventional uh, decapping pin on your uh, primer uh, to knock the primer out. I, I've done that for years, but I've also broke more decapping pins and bent in more rods than I care to remember. Now the main reason of that is, is that unless you really check to make sure that your surplus cases are reloadable, some of them are um, barred and primed where they have the two little flash holes in it, you run that in with a conventional um, RCBS or Hornady or uh, Redding dies, it'll uh, break that pin lickety split. Now I'm not going to say that um, what I'm going to use here won't break, but you have a lot less chance of uh, of the um, of, of screwing up your uh, reloading die by using one of these Lyman Universal decapping dies. It's item number seven six three one two nine zero. That's the Lyman decapping die. It uh, it works for everything from two twenty three three oh eight. I think it works right up to forty five um, caliber, or may even be bigger. So the beauty of these is they'll knock the pins out of everything. They're conventional um, conventional uh, thread on there so they just screw right into the top of your 
press. Just so that, sorry about that big bald spot there guys, just so that it makes contact with the top of your shell holder. Now these just go through. Now I'm going to, I'll do one here. This is a federal conventional case. Commercial and you know what? I think there's a crimp on this too. Yes there is. These federal Eagle 150 grain full metal jacket have a crimp as well. And that just pops them right out. That's all you need to do is you pop it out. So you can see how slick that went. And you'll see this three, this military stuff is just a little bit more difficult to pop out. So you can see this primer, the uh, crimp primer, just a little bit better. Here you can just see right around the edge there that there is a uh, there's a crimp on that. So that has to get uh, swedged or cut out. So we'll deprime these two other ones here. It's just that simple. You just gently knock them out. Just that easy. So now these are deprimed, but are they ready to reload yet? No, they're not ready to reload re reload yet. There are a few more steps that we have to take. All right, Glockster, how am I going to get rid of this primer crimp? Because you can't seat a new primer with that crimp in there. Well you've got a couple options. Um, if you've got the coin, you got the get the coin, you can splurge on one of these puppies. It's a military brass. Eliminate the grunt work with Dylan's Super Swedge 600. Yeah check that out guys. 98.95. I have cut the primer pot, cut the primers or cut the um, the crimp on thousands of primers just like this. Get yourself an electric drill. Most guys have electric drills. Chuck up your brass. You should have one of these anyway. You should have an RCBS neck chamfer. This is pretty standard if you're going to reload. If you don't have one, I think these are about $14.95. So, Chuck your brass in, pop her in like that, hold her in like this. Boom, there it is. That's it. You have cut the bulk of the swedging, bulk of the crimp out of that primer pocket. It is just that simple. Now it may take a little while, If you don't have a drill, I wouldn't suggest going out and buying one, but I would suggest going out and buying one of these because guess what? Old school works too. Yes, it takes a little while longer. Absolutely it takes a little while longer. If you've got the time, great. If you don't have the time, go this route. If you don't have the time but you have the money, grab one of those um, grab one of those Dillon Swedge 600s. They work good too. But the big thing is, guys, is that um, this has to be done if you're going to use anything with a crimp primer. Bottom line. And I don't know about down in the states, but for a while there, uh, Canadian military was selling their once fired 308 cases to the public for. The last batch I picked up was um, $25 for a thousand once fired cases. Now this is a few years ago up in Edmonton when the Edmonton Barracks was doing it. Whether they still do that or not I don't know. But uh, that's the next step you have to do if, if you're using uh, cases with crimp in primers. Normal commercial cases you can totally eliminate this step. Okay now we've got to resize the case. There's a couple schools of thought on resizing once fired cases. If you have one example of the firearm and the caliber that you're reloading for, you can just neck size the case. Now what I mean by that is you set adjust your sizing die so you're not touching this shoulder. You're not pushing, putting, putting the shoulder back whatsoever. 
you're just resizing the neck so that you can seat a new bullet. Now you do this, you get much longer case life. Um, generally they can be a little bit more accurate, but that is the one, the one firearm that you just neck sizes for is the only firearm that you're going to use that particular reloaded ammunition in. Now I have uh, right now four different uh, 308 caliber rifles. So I full length resize the cases. That means that you resize the body back to factory specs. You push this neck back just, just a hair, a few thousandths, just so that it will chamber in every single firearm that you may want it to. Now I have two M305s, I have a 308 bolt action, and I have my FN Fenar. So I want these cases, I, I may be loading a generic load through them, say for my M305, but I still want those bullets, these loaded cartridges, to chamber in my FN, FNAR, as well as my Savage 308. So I resize every single case, including my 223s, every, ca every caliber of uh, cartridge that I reload reload for I re full length resize. So these are RCBS dies. I'll talk a little bit about different dies. Um, RCBS dies recommended. Reading dies highly recommended. And Dylan dies probably my favorite. Trouble is, the Dillon dies are probably about $20 more than the Redding and the uh, RCBS. Hornady dies, I've had some issues with. Um, I've had uh, some 308 Hornady dies that I've returned simply because the um, inside of the die was very rough and they were scoring the cases very, very badly. So I don't usually buy Hornady anymore. <laughs> and one um, company that I would tell you to strongly stay away from their dies is Lyman. Now, I don't own a single Lyman die anymore. I uh, purchased uh, four sets. I've actually had four different sets of Lyman dies. Two and 308 and two and 223. I purchased them in Bass Pro when they first opened up. Uh, the price was right, but the problem with I had with the uh, Lyman dies, and I had two 308s and two 223s because I had to go back and exchange them. The Threads were cut so rough and so crudely, I couldn't get them into my um, into my rock checker press. Now I'm looking at this uh, universal decapping die. It's cut very crudely as well. It'll it will thread in. I have to do some cleanup on it. So I would say keep away from the Lymans. From my experience, they haven't been the best dies. I like RCBS. Uh, Dylan are fantastic, but they're special order from the states. RCBS are pretty much everywhere up here pretty much recommend these. You can't go wrong with an RCBS die. Alright, setup. Zoom in here a bit more gentlemen and ladies because I've got about 10% of my audience is actually laid, is actually women which is pretty awesome. Okay, shell holder straight up to the top. We want to thread this die right in till it touches. Now we set the locking ring down a bit. Okay, that's the initial setup. Is that where it's going to be? Maybe, but probably not. Next thing we need to do is we're going to run this case in and resize it. But first, first, we have to, sorry, going the wrong way, guys. We have to lubricate the case. I don't want to make any crude and lascivious comments, but lube is good with firearms as well. So, I really like imperial sizing die wax. It's just like it says, it's a wax. Very simple to use. If you're only doing a few cases, this is the way to go, man. You grab her like this, and you just give this a quick little coating. There. It stay, sticks to your hands, to your fingers. And so, one little one little dab will do you for quite a few cases. So, there we've got our four cases primed and ready to go. Now, an alternative to that is the um, RCBS Case Lube 2. It's a liquid. Now, the way you work that works is that you use a um, 
I generally don't use these. That's a that's a, in case I run out of everything else. You actually get the uh, RCBS case loop pad, which I have a couple of. This is actually an old used one. It's pretty rough shape. You coat that liquid on there, let it soak it in, and then you actually take the cases and roll it down. You don't want to get any lube on this neck, or it'll hydraulic in, and it'll it'll uh, the um, lube will actually dent your necks. You don't want that. You don't want that much um, case lube on there. And uh, if you're doing a, a lot of um, cases, like you know, you've got three, four hundred to lube up at a time. This is what I like to do. I'll take on. Uh, I'll do two rows in the top of the case into the top of the case lube pad, and then I'll use Lyman Quick Spray Case Lube. Just give it a quick spritz all along. Let's zoom back a bit here, gentlemen. Sorry, guys. My zooming technique sucks. Anyway, you just spray it just so it's along the half of the case on both sides. Let it sit for a little while until it kind of goes slightly dry to the touch. Then you can go ahead and. Uh, size your cases. Now, I'm not going to size all three of these cases. I'm going to pull one of these federals back. Now, here's how you... Now, we've, this is what the um, instruction manual is going to tell you. Run the die down until it hits the top of the shell holder. So let's run it in. Okay, that's the initial sizing. All well and fine. Now, when I first started reloading, like, okay, I'm good. You're not good. You're not good until you actually test that round in a firearm. So what we've got here is my faithful Savage. That's probably taken more game out of a $300 rifle than I've ever, ever thought imagined. Just a lot, pop her right in. You can see that it's a little bit stiff. It will chamber, but it's just a little bit stiff. So what we're going to do is we're going to pop that case out. I've still got some case lube on my fingers. So what we're going to do is we're going to set this die down. Not quite a quarter turn. And run it through again. Now we'll try, we'll try this again guys. All right, so we're going to pop that in, run it down, and now look. Look at how much easier. I would call that a nicely resized case. Now that's with a commercial federal load. Let's see how it does with the TZ80 load. These tend to be a real see you next Tuesday to resize. Why? I don't know why. Now, some guys like to put a little graphite inside the case next just to keep it from uh, hanging up on that. That's just something I've never bothered with. Sometimes it works, you know, it's just it's one of your preferences. Let's just give this a quick clean. Now let's try this one in here. Closes nice to me. All right, so now we have our reloading die set. It's good to go. Now we can get the rest of our cases resized. What you want to do is get your Allen wrench out and set that locking ring key in there. Just snug it up. It doesn't have to be a, a death grip on there, but get that snugged up. All right, now we've got our cases are all resized. At that point after we resize them, there's a couple things you can do. You can go through each one, wipe the lube off with a rag. I don't bother. I throw them right back into the uh, cleaner and I clean the cases again, vibrate them up and get them all polished up nice and tidy. So now we've got them polished, we've got them cleaned up, they're all ready to roll. So what's the next step? You're going to go through, you're going to get all your brass, you're going to check them all. If you're using a walnut or a... Um, corn cob, go through and make sure that all the flash holes are cleaned out of walnut media or the corn cob medium. They will get in there and clean it up while you're there. Give the um, flash 
um, hole a little bit of a cleanup. So next thing you need to do, let's make sure we're within the proper length of case. All right, next thing we need to do is check the case lengths. A couple of methods we can do that. Go to your reloading book, find the maximum case length for your particular cartridge, and use calipers. These are 2.03... Uh, 2 Seven five. There you go. That's one method of doing it. Is that is that too long, too short? I don't know. Damn if I know. I didn't look. Just telling you guys what you need to do. Or you can use one of these uh, case length gauges. This is an old old bugger by Killen and Hare. So you run it up to three oh eight. Hmm. This may indicate that it may need a trimming. This is showing that it's a little long. So we're going to have to check that. Gee, Glockster, now that we know that these need, may, may need to be trimmed, how are we going to trim it? A couple ways of doing it. There's the old school, very capable RCBS trimming tool. I have had this, oh good lord, <laughs> I've had this 30 years. <laughs> wow, okay, this, this is my 30 year old uh, RCBS case trimmer, which I never use anymore. How can you never use it anymore, Glockster? Oh, I found something that's a little bit quicker and a little bit easier to use. Now I beat up on Lee products once in a while, but some of their stuff is brilliant. And this, their case length trimmers are the shit, man. Um, you come, you get, to, you, this is, these are all separate components. First of all, you get a g length gauge. This is the gauge, this is the length for 308. This is the cutter. This is the shell holder. This is the chuck. We break out our handy dandy drill press, or handy dandy cordless drill again. We throw our possibly too long 308 case in. We chuck it in nice and tight. We throw the trimmer in. You do this after you resize it. You throw the trimmer in. And you can see the amount of brass that's coming off. I have found that RCBS or uh, Federal Brass is very soft and it really tends to stretch. So after you cut it like that, Use your chamfering tool. Clean the inner and outer surface. And boom. It's just that simple. Now we've got a case that's been trimmed and fits exactly into the case length gauge. So there you go guys. You can eliminate the measuring. You can eliminate all that hoo-ha just by using one of these Lee trimmers. Just for shits and giggles, let's see how this um, TZ did. It's once fired as well. Both these are once fired out of my M305. And the um, TZ required just a tiny little bit of trimming. Now since I'm not going to actually load, put powder or prime these, we're just going to leave them like that. So there you go guys, there's trimming the cases. Okay guys, once you've got all your cases prepped and ready to go, prime them, charge them, seat the bullet, you're all set to go. Now um, if you want, uh, go over and check my Reloading 308 with Virgin Cases video. That covers everything right there um, from that point on. Now the one thing I did mention that was determining overall length of your cartridge. So what you want to do is you'll take one, one of your uh, resized cases, flatten one end of it. And just pop your bullet in there, pop a bullet in there very lightly just to get it to stop, just to get it to start. Now we're going to put that off to the side. I'm going to talk about overall length a bit. Overall length is determined by a few things. Um, if you want to keep it simple, go into your reloading manual, look at the uh, cartridge overall length for that particular um, firearm or bullet you're using right from the manufacturer, seat it to that length and it will function in just virtually every single um, firearm of that caliber. Or you can uh, customize a bit. If you're hand loading, you may as well customize it to your firearm. Now, your firearm is going to mandate a few things. The l actual length of the magazine, either external magazine or um, detachable or internal magazine, will limit how far you can have the actual cartridge length. So what you want to do is you take that bullet that you've just lightly seated in, run it in, you're using. So you set that in, slowly pull it out. Now with any luck, it's just engaged the tip of the lands and the rifling. All right. 
Now right there is your maximum overall cartridge le length from the bolt face to the lands of this where this particular bullet <coughs> engages the lands. So what I've done is you take a once fired case out of this particular firearm, do a little flat spot on the case and then gently run it in and that will give you your um, cartridge overall length to the lands, the, the lands and grooves onto the rifle. Now you may need to back that off a few thousands just so that it's not touching or it may be too long for your magazine. Whereas this one seems to function just fine in that one. That would be right there, that would be my overall cartridge length for this particular firearm. Like I said, I'd only do that in a precision rifle, um, in a hunting load, um, an expensive bullet, where you're looking for your absolute accuracy. But if you're just making up a bunch of generic 308 full metal jacket that you want to be able to function in your in in your three in your semi-automatics and your bolt actions, uh, you're not looking at minute angle of accuracy. Just go ahead and load out to uh, to uh, manufactured suggested cartridge length. So there you have it, guys. From resizing to depriming to uh, setting the um, cartridge length, that's got her. So once again, I really appreciate you guys taking the time out of your busy schedule to watch me. It's, uh, it's been lots of fun. And um, once again, like I always end my videos, turn the computer off, shut off YouTube, turn the TV off, get off your asses, go outside, go grab your firearms, go grab your wife, go grab your kids, go grab your buddies and go do some shooting and exercise your God-given right to own and discharge firearms in a safe manner. Thanks guys, later.